Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, Move Review. This picks up exactly where the first one left off. And since this movie doesn't really tell you what the first movie, you know, where it left off or what really happened in it, I won't really either in this video. If you haven't watched the first movie, there's really no reason to watch this movie. Not that there's much reason if you have, but anyway, you're not going to have any idea what's going on, especially if you haven't played the games. If you haven't watched the first movie and or played the games, you're going to have no clue what's going on. So basically, in this first scene, Johnny Cage is recast just in time for him to get killed as Shao Kahn, the Emperor of Outworld, begins his invasion of Earth. I guess there was a loophole. You know, the whole first movie was pointless by this movie's very existence and the first ten minutes of it. Anyway, so it starts raining men, as I believe the Nostalgia Critic also pointed out. I just have to wonder, do they get burned by those flames? Is it them, you know, penetrating the Earth's atmosphere? Anyway, so, you know... Basically everyone is recast. I think the only two to reappear is Liu Kang and Kitana. Everyone else, new actors. The plus side to that is that the new guys can actually fight. That's the one plus about this movie. The martial arts are actually pretty good. They're not awkwardly shot or edited. The coverage is really good. The choreography is also really good most of the time. And that's really all this movie is. It's a lot of martial arts scenes. And if you don't know the characters from playing the games, they're going to have absolutely no impact on you whatsoever. It's just, it, they might as well be wearing the exact same thing because you don't get any backstory or motivation for any of the opposing fighters. And do note that the only actual character development that there is of the main characters is basically what was left over from the first movie, which does mean that Sonya is still extremely flat. And she changed her hair, you know, in the split second that takes place between the end of the first and the beginning of this. And Shao Kahn is no longer CGI and not huge. So anyway... Basically, this entire movie, scene after scene, one new character, one or more new characters introduced. We don't even always get their names. They're either going to fight someone we already know, or they're going to play a minor role, maybe deliver a little bit of exposition. And that's kind of it, you know. I get it. They wanted to introduce as many characters as they could from the Mortal Kombat universe. It's a really bad idea to do in a movie that's less than 90 minutes long because, again, if you don't already know these characters from the game, that's it. You're just, you're not going to have any clue who you're watching. And if you have played the games, I would have to say you're most likely just going to want to play the games again. I, maybe that's it. Maybe the whole point of this movie is to be, you know, a really long trailer. But trust me, you know, people didn't really need to be reminded of playing a game that they already enjoyed. You know, so, yeah, the movie doesn't really have much cause to even exist. Anyway, they want to introduce a lot of characters. Fine, I get that. So what's with the bringing back of old characters? Some, most of the time, they don't even explain it. They just kind of appear, even though we wouldn't expect them to from events in the first movie. And that's kind of it. Yeah. Okay, so the costumes and some of the special effects are still pretty good. The effects are definitely better than the first movie. And 
for all the fighting that the bad guys do, they certainly also do their share of posing. It should also be noted that almost no one in this can act. James Ramar as Raiden, he does a pretty good job, but no one else in this really... Yeah, everyone was cast for fighting ability, it would seem, except for maybe Brian Thompson, who can actually fight, as evidenced in this. I didn't know that before watching this, but I would think that he was, excuse me, mostly cast for being just, you know, kind of an imposing badass to look at, you know. So, basically, the plot. Shall I go into the plot? It can be summed up really quickly, which must be why they keep reminding us of it in the film over and over. Basically, okay, it's gonna be six days, and then Shao Kahn's gonna rule Earth Realm as well as our world. And basically, Kitana, her mother, is now apparently evil and resurrected, although we didn't even know she existed, much less that she was... Well, we might have known from the first movie that she was dead, anyway. Yeah, she's back, and she's now evil, and the only way to win is apparently to bring Kitana and her mother Sindel together. Now, I'm, I'm not kidding, that's it. That's the entire plot of this movie. Everything else is just fight scenes. Fight scenes that, once again, have no impact because we don't know these characters' backstory, and they don't progress the plot in the least. You could cut out a good half of the fighting of this movie, and nothing would... Just nothing would be lost from it. Nothing at all. Other than the choreography and, you know, the fighting. And hey, if, you know, if what you want is a lot of fighting, then sure, you can watch this movie. And if you, you know, want to see the characters from the games fighting, again, you know, this movie delivers that. But it delivers nothing else. The dialogue is... It's usually just bad, but a couple of times it gets downright painful. The exposition is delivered really ham-handedly. And just all the cliches are in there. And not even, you know, they don't even try to hide it really. And that's the same for the overall structure of the movie and the progression of it. All the cliches just... They managed to cram all of them in there. It's almost impressive. Shao Kahn, the Emperor, is the new villain, played by Brian Thompson, and I like Brian Thompson. I tend to enjoy, you know, he was one of the things I was looking forward to about this film, but he really, he has nothing on Shang Tsung. I mean, he tries to ham it up as much, definitely, but he's just nowhere near as much fun and nowhere near as threatening, which is really weird because it's got a huge army and, you know, it's, it shouldn't be difficult to make him imposing. He, he was already imposing when we saw him in the first movie, what little we saw of him, and now he's there more and, yeah, but he's just not that scary. The music is pretty cool, but mostly it's just not, at least to me, not being that huge of a fan of the games, having played very little of them, it doesn't feel like typical Mortal Kombat music to me. I mean, even when you know almost nothing about Mortal Kombat, you can recognize the music, you know. It's just, it's part of pop culture. It's, you know, it has a very distinct sound. They do use some of that in this movie, but it's very, very little. And that just seems strange for something that's so clearly... I mean, it, 
if this movie is anything at all, it's a huge love letter to the game franchise. Even though they really do screw up very basic stuff of the overall mythology, from what I could understand from watching it with my girlfriend. Yeah. They do squeeze in a lot of characters from the games. Some of them don't even get to do anything. I will say that several of them do get to fight and, you know, get to do some cool stuff. Some some of them get to do, you know, pull off their really powerful moves from the games. Yeah, I think that's about what there is to say. Yeah, it's just not that compelling of a movie. It's got some cool fighting, but that's really it. And why wouldn't you just play the games? I mean, why watch fighting when you can be controlling the fighting yourself? You know, the only point of doing an adaptation of a video game would be if it can show you something that's more compelling to just watch than to take part in, or at least as compelling. And this, it just is not the case. It's a, frankly a rather boring movie for, you know, I'm a huge fan of martial arts and it just did not grab me. You know, I'm not saying it was downright and pleasant to sit through, but it just wasn't compelling at any point. And I doubt I'll remember very much about it tomorrow. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.